Hey everybody, welcome to Things You Should Know, Accounting Edition. Today we're going to do a quick two examples of adding transactions to the general journal again, and then we'll go on next video to the general ledger and how that all works. So today we're going to start with the general journal, bang, right in front of us. What I've done is taken two more of the transactions that Jello went through. One was to get the supplies, remember that, and one was to get the equipment. And in this, what I did was I added the two transactions together. Originally, Jello had gotten just a short-term loan and the equipment, but that same day he decided to write a check for $5,000. Well, I figure we're going to do it as one transaction, so it's just a little bit larger transaction, so you can kind of understand when it gets a little more complicated. So the first thing we're going to look at is the supply purchase. We're, now, the process for the supply purchase is the exact same as everything we've been through before with all the other times we've done this. The first thing we do is we create an analysis. We determine the asset account is supplies, and it's increased by $5,000. We find the other asset account is cash, and it will be decreased by $5,000. Once again, representing that we have $5,000 worth of supplies, and in exchange, we're given the vendor $5,000 worth of cash. And in this case, I believe it was Costco that we gave the money. So the debit credit rules, debit increases to the asset accounts are recorded as debit. So we'll debit supplies for $5,000. Credit decreases to asset accounts are recorded as credits. Credit cash for $5,000, reducing the value of cash we had. Oh, hey, look at this, guys. There's our little T accounts right there. Isn't that magical? And what I even did was they match up to the numbers. So if we go back to this whole list, you'll see the numbers match up with our entire T account sheet. So back to the supplies. So finally, once we've established the analysis, the debit credit rules, the T accounts, and also don't remember the left right, don't forget the left right rule. They have to even out, and they do in this case. Then we'll go down to the general journal. The example general journal entry would be something like this. If it's the only entry on that page, you'd have the January. Um, in this case, I just put it here for our reference. You'll see when we go back to the general ledger, you'll see that we, the general journal, you'll see that we don't have the date there. But looking at it, the first one is the at the account we're going to be debiting. That'll be supplies, $5,000. And then, of course, remember to indent in. Cash will be the second line. Credit, $5,000. But don't forget, for the general journal, the most important thing, well, not the most important thing, but a very important thing, is to say what it was for, purchase supplies, and any sort of tracking ability. In this case, we wrote check 111 to pay for the supplies. So once again, here it is for the supplies. Analysis, debit credit rules, T accounts, the journal entry. Now we're on the equipment purchase. Remember how it went before. Jello needed some equipment. Coffee RS was happy to provide him some credit, and Jello decided he did want to pay a little bit of cash. In this case, the asset account equipment will be increased by $22,000, representing a whole new back end that Jello has in his coffee shop. Then we have the liability account. Coffee RS indicated they'd be more than happy to give him a short-term loan. They gave him $17,000 worth of loan, while Jello did pay $5,000 cash as well down. We'll go through the debit credit rules. Debit increases to asset accounts recorded as debits. In this case, debit the equipment for $22,000. Credit increases to liability accounts, which is what the short-term loan is. That is a liability account, are recorded as credits. So we'll credit short-term loan $17,000. And finally, there's going to be that third section because we have three parts of this transaction. Credit decreases to asset accounts are recorded as credits. So in this case, we're paying cash $5,000 out. We'll credit cash for $5,000. Once again, we have the T accounts here to mark what we're doing. And once again, for purposes when we do organize things, and this is just for my purpose, you'll see I have a C, a G, and a D. If we go back to T accounts, we'll see the C, the G, and the D. So you see, we got all of them in our master list of T accounts. Once again, you also want to make sure left, right rule, 22,000 on the left side of columns, none on these. 17 plus five is 22,000 as well on the right, so they equal out. Then we go down to the general journal entry. In this case, I have the date, the month here for our purposes here, but once again, when we go back to the general ledger, you'll see there is no month because you only have this when it's the only thing appearing on a sheet or it's a new sheet or a change in months. The first thing you always do is you put the date, you put the first thing down that you're going to debit. In this case, it'll be equipment, 22000 The next, you indent it once when you're going to credit it. Short-term loan, 17000 That's all be credited. Now, this is where it's a little different from before. We have a third part of the transaction, cash. It only gets indented once because it's part of the credit section. Indent once, you have cash, and you'll 
credit $5,000. Finally, in the lines below, you put in a description, we purchased new equipment from Coffee RS. We received this on invoice 10456 and we paid with check 112. Once again, this is all gonna be important because this allows you to track if there's a mistake made, maybe somebody was double paying, maybe there's some fraud going on. Any sort of details you can get like this will allow either Jello or an auditor that maybe Jello hires to come in and verify that everything's right. Then we'll go back to the general ledger, the general journal, and here we go. Here it is in the thing. And this is what you get for the full general journal. There we go, guys. Isn't that awesome? So that's it. Your two examples I was going to give you with this. I am going to fill this out in our downtime with the rest of the items so we can refer back to it because I want to keep the general journal up to date, keep everything so we can track it. So join me next week. Next week, we're going to go over the general ledger itself. The general ledger is used to analyze transactions quickly, and it is a combination of a ton of different journals, and it allows you to track between different accounts, T-accounts, and we'll go through all that starting next week. Until next time, take care.